Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about some ECS again. Yep, I feel like it's been a while since we've talked about some ECS, but I'm starting to ramp back up the ECS content because I got a lot of really cool things planned in the ECS realm. So anyways, today we're going to be talking about is ECS even worth it? Is it even worth it to go through the trouble to learn the entity component system or even create your own entity component system? Do all the benefits of ECS outweigh all the headaches that may come along with it? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's another game developer on YouTube named Tom Randall. You may have came across his channel just called Randall. And he's been streaming on Twitch lately, so he actually did an interview on one of his Twitch live streams with another developer named Ryan Flurry and they talked about um, making an entity component system. And they broke out that clip into its own video here on YouTube, so I'll definitely link that below because this video is pretty much just going to be a response to some of the points that they brought up in that video. But in that video, they're actually talking about making their own entity component system because I believe they make games just in straight up C, which is pretty badass to be honest. And of course the entity component system that I typically work with is Unity's entity component system. So this isn't necessarily um, talking against Unity's entity component system, but just talking about entity component systems in general. Now today's video is gonna be mostly theoretical, but the real test is gonna to be to actually put this stuff in action and do some performance comparisons. So doing some performance testing against regular object oriented programming with some of the methods that Ryan brings up as well as the entity component system. So I do wanna really start kind of hammering out these tests and finding out at the point where it actually is worth it to use ECS. So again, if you do have any videos on some tests that you'd like to see, definitely let me know down in the comments section below. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of those performance testing videos when they come out. And hey, while you're down there, feel free to hit that like button as well. So Ryan brought up two points that people typically use as reasons to use an entity component system over not using an entity component system. So those were performance and composability. So performance is of course, can the game run well when you have many, many entities on the screen doing all kinds of crazy different things. And then composability just comes down to the ease of use of an entity component system, just how you can assign different components to any entity pretty easily. Then you can have systems to act on all the entities with a specific set of components. So Ryan's main argument on the performance side of things is that it really only becomes a consideration when you have like tens of thousands of entities on the screen. And even then you might be fine without an entity component system. And then he went on to say, how often do you actually get to that point where you have so many entities on the screen where that kind of consideration is actually going to be needed to be made. And then when it comes to composability, he did say that he really likes the fact of how with the entity component system, you can kind of mix and match different components. And then you can just iterate through all the entities that have a certain component. So his solution is something that's probably going to make a whole lot of programmers cringe, but I think it's a pretty good idea, especially for his use cases that he brings up. And his solution was to essentially create what he calls a mega struct. And this mega struct just has flags for like every possible state or functionality for any entity in your game could ever possibly have. So can this entity walk? Can it run? Is it a vehicle? Is it controlled by the player? Is it controlled by the AI? Can this entity catch fire? Is this entity on fire right now? He doesn't specify if this entity is a player, a vehicle, an NPC, a chest, or whatever. It's just an entity in the game, and then you can basically just check mark the flags that you want for that particular entity, so then it can have kind of the desired functionality. Now you're probably thinking if every single thing in the game world has this mega struct, that's probably wasting a whole ton of memory. And he admits that it's true that you are wasting a whole lot of memory by doing this, but it's so small in comparison to you know, things like textures and audio assets, things that actually take up large chunks of memory. So again, with all your entities, you basically just set the flags to true for whichever uh, behavior you want these entities to implement. And then you create you know, these different systems where they basically just look through all the entities in your game, just this whole massive list of everything in your game, and then you check to see if it does have that flag. If it doesn't, then it's just gonna go ahead and skip it and move on to the next. And for the most part, you are gonna be skipping over a bunch of entities because you know you can have like a thousand entities in your game, but only one player. So it's gonna skip over 999 of those. And then when it gets to that one player, then it sees that it has the player flag set to true. 
So then it's gonna actually implement that behavior that you have in your system. So he says, yes, you are going to be skipping over most of the entities most of the time, but PCs can do things very quickly nowadays. So just iterating over a thousand entities and just checking if they have this certain flag set to true is not really going to be all that difficult for a computer to do. And he seemed pretty confident in saying that the bottlenecks are not going to be in the whole entity lookup, but they're gonna be in the systems themselves. And if that's the case, then you can actually break out the systems in kind of a more data oriented fashion. Then you can kind of include some pointers from your megastruct over into these data oriented things. I'm not entirely clear on how that works. The other thing I'm a little bit confused on is where exactly the data for all the entities live. I'm not entirely sure if it all lives in this megastruct as well, or maybe has some logic built in that can run at the beginning of the game that can assign some additional structs to entities with some specific flags set to true. So anyways, those are Ryan's major reasonings against an entity component system. So what are my thoughts on all this? So before I get into it, I'd just like to talk about my thoughts on the entity component system in general. Now, of course, I'm having a ton of fun learning the entity component system and teaching you all about the entity component system as well. But that being said, I definitely do not think that it fits for every developer or every project. I think ECS should just be treated as another tool in the tool belt of you as a programmer, and you should really only implement it if it fits within the goals of your project or the goals of you as a developer. So if you're working on a project and for one reason or another, an entity component system will greatly benefit you, whether that be you know performance, composability, or something else, then yeah, I certainly think ECS is something worth looking into at the very least. Also, if you as a developer just kind of want to learn the entity component system to expand your skills, that's a totally valid reason for making a project using the entity component system. And so for me, I kind of fall into the latter category where I really want to experiment with the entity component system and kind of learn all of its quirks and everything. So that's why I'm kind of doing a lot of stuff with the entity component system right now. And again, I really want to do a lot of these performance comparisons so we can kind of learn the upper limits of whatever traditional methods of programming we're using and where we actually do start to see some benefits from ECS. So one of the places that I think we are going to see a lot of benefits from ECS is on lower end devices. So I'm specifically referring to like mobile devices, the Nintendo Switch, or web browsers. I think that in these three cases, we're much more likely to hit the upper limits of the computational power of a lot of these modern devices that we have. Of course, you know, we can run some awesome games on our high end computers, but what happens when we go and port our game to a mobile phone or the Nintendo Switch? Is it gonna start, you know, heating up and like really using a lot of the hardware resources and just chewing through the battery life on these devices, which is ultimately gonna lead to a poor player experience and low player retention, so that's not good. And then another place where I think it's gonna matter a lot, and this is a little more device agnostic, is when it comes to multiplayer. So if we can implement some sort of entity component system in a multiplayer game, then that's gonna mean less data traveling back and forth between all the different clients and the server, which is gonna lead to quicker response time, less lag and all that, which is actually going to lead to a positive player experience. Now to talk about the megastruct a little bit, I do think that he has some good points about you know how fast computers are these days. And even some of the devices that I was bringing up like phones and the Nintendo Switch, they can still kind of chew through things pretty quickly. But I do feel like I still have some concerns for this when it comes to debugging. Um, so for example, what if, you know, like two flags are enabled on a specific entity and those things aren't compatible and they start, you know, causing all kinds of issues. And then what happens if there are some, you know, like weird edge cases where, you know, one flag is turned on, but another one's not, but then another one is and then you kind of get into some like really weird situations. And then you really just need to be mindful of kind of the order of execution of everything. So if one system is running before another and one system is kind of modifying some data that some other needs to reference, are there gonna be any issues with that? Of course, this is probably still gonna be a problem with an entity component system as well, but I'm just curious if that would be any worse with the you know megastruct solution. But at the end of the day, what this really comes down to is the performance of your game and how that impacts the player experience as well as the ease of development for you as a developer. If you can you know, make more content and more content quicker, then that's just going to benefit everybody in the long run. So if you know ECS facilitates that stuff, definitely go for that. If the megastruct is something that sounds interesting to you and you think that you can implement it with some good performance and you're not going to run into any crazy issues with debugging or anything like that, 
then hey, that might be an adequate solution for you as well. Anyways, the one last thing that I'll leave you with is Ryan actually wrote a blog post over on his website, which I will link in the description below. And on this, he was talking about contiguous versus non-contiguous memory when it comes to entities. So contiguous memory would be all these entities are just like kind of all in a row in memory, similar to how it is in Unity's entity component system. And then non-contiguous would be like, um, if things are deleted, there's kind of different spaces in there. So then everything's kind of like all scrambled out in this big array that you have. And I think it's a good read. And he did some good performance comparisons that basically showed that all the trouble that you have to go through, through creating this whole thing that manages making this nice clean list where everything is contiguous is not really worth it. You don't get that much performance benefits out of it. And one of the great points that he brought up, which is just really good advice for game development in general, is to develop for the worst case scenario. So when you optimize your game for the worst case scenario, then basically, you know, everything that's not the worst case scenario is gonna run better than that. So if you can optimize for that worst case scenario, you can pretty much guarantee that your game is going to run smoothly. So anyways, that's kind of my response to this interview between Tom Randall and Ryan Fleury. I think it was a great interview. I hope you guys all watched the whole thing so you can kind of understand all the nuances to his points and everything. And I think for me, this is really just the start of this conversation about is ECS worth it? So again, I really want to put ECS to the test and do a lot of, you know, performance comparisons and, you know, even comparing things like just the regular C sharp job system to the entity component system and kind of seeing how much of a benefit are we actually getting and what's the point where it actually is significant. Once again, I am open to suggestions for any specific tests that you want me to run with the entity component system. So just go ahead and drop those down in the comment section below. And while you're there, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. And I think that's about it. So I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.